my hamster almost gave me a heart attack. Hi, everybody. This is Ray, Life and Vibe. And today I am covering two meals that Foodie Beauty just had published on her channel, Everyday Miriam. One is a beef stew with a selection of cheese sandwiches, which I know is just fantastic for a diabetic diet, and especially the one that is recommended by her physician uh, in Kuwait. And the second is a Ramadan vlog, which actually looks more like just foodie making some grape leaf dish. So I am excited to take a PC and take a look and see what we got going on here. Anyway, if you do like this type of content, hit the likes, make a comment, subscribe, all those good things. And I'm going to make sure I speed her up to 1.5 so that she is nice and quick. Just a little bit about myself. I am a registered nurse here in the United States and I provide commentary about health in social media using content creators like Foodie Beauty as a platform to have these discussions. So before further ado, before I get started, let's bring old Foodie up to the stage and let's take a look at this beef stew. I'm excited. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. I have a very special iftar, but I have to say this all over again because I realized, you know, I started eating and everything. I said bismillah, started eating, and I wasn't recording. So, <laughs> all right. I have some little Ramadan lanterns. Julia makes a cameo appearance. Um, beef stew, homemade beef stew. The beef is very tender. I tried it. It's a little liquidy, but it's been cooking in the oven for two and a half hours. I didn't, it wasn't ready on time for Magda when I was supposed to, to you know, um, stop the fasting, break the fast. So I had a date and a little glass of milk. And I um, prayed macrobe and then you now eating this. It was in the oven for like two and a half hours, maybe a bit more. Um, so yeah, and now I have, we have to have bread and butter with stew. So this is bread and butter with a piece of Gouda cheese and some grape leaves. Now I'm going to make grape leaves. You have to have bread and butter with stew? I don't think that's a law written in stone anywhere, foodie. <laughs> I think you just like to have that with your beef stew. Oh, goodness, girl. Uh, I, you eat meals like you are out doing hard labor all day long. And you are not burning enough energy to have any reason to have this much carbohydrate in a meal. The carrots and potatoes, all of those are starchy vegetables. And though obviously we want to encourage you to have vegetables, they may be more than your serving that you're allowed on the meal, especially with the size of that Goldilocks porridge bowl over there. What in the size bowl have you got going on? And the spoon is huge too. Can you not just come out with normal size plates, utensils, portions, and so forth? Oh my gosh. And butter and bread sandwich. That reminds me of... How a sandwich is made in England. White bread. That looks healthy, doesn't it? Oh my God, girl. That is just, that is just not going to help out your blood sugars. We know this. I say it all the time. I'm not saying anything I haven't said 15 times, probably last video. Oh my goodness. And the beef, you know, your diabetic physician had recommended you keep away from red meats. And I would say if you're showing this much swelling, which you are obviously always looking a little bit swollen, girl, then that protein of the beef, I don't know, your kidneys, your salt, how much salt did you put in that? And I know those aren't the grape leaves you made. I don't think so. I think those are ones you bought. I'm not sure. We'll find out. But still, sodium. Sodium in the bread and the cheese, too. You didn't need all this. More carb over here <laughs> with this, this stodgy carb. I can't believe it. I mean, I can. I've said it a million times. I was sounding like a broken record. All right, keep going, foodie. But um, I found a can way back in the cupboard. I'm going to finish this first. And I'm trying this new drink, candy can. 
rocket ice lolly flavor. Now I love rocket ice lollies, but sparkling, it has zero sugar. It's a sparkling drink. It's supposed to taste like rocket ice lolly. So I'm going to try this now. It's mm. not bad, but I don't think I would buy them again. It, I can taste the fake sugar way too much. I don't no, you didn't like that, girl. Your face made a face. And to be honest, I don't think carbohydrate carbonated drinks are recommended either. So why don't you just just have a glass of water? Just just get some iced water. Just have that. And if you want to add a zero sugar flavor packet to it, rather than that cordial vimto that you, you drink all the time, then that would be good. But oh, girl. All right, keep going. But anyway, it's okay. Um, so yes, bismillah. Um, yeah, so I broke my fast with a date, which that's like tradition, like a date and a little glass of milk. I was really, really hungry. So the milk, the cold milk actually tastes good. Normally I don't like just milk on its own like that. I love carrots. Mm. The size of that potato yeah. is I like huge. the flavor of the worst. It's like a whole the potato. I can't believe I wasn't recording. Anyway, I have a story for you. I'm surprised we didn't see her make the beef stew as content because foodie would never pass up making content but i have a feeling she has either her kitchen is a hot mess because she has been doing all this cooking recently because everyone got after her for getting subsidized food and literally stealing from those in need to feed herself so she has been here cooking more home-cooked meals, which I'm sure is driving her nuts. And it is probably a hellhole in that kitchen, I'm thinking. So I'm guessing that's why we're not giving the shots from the kitchen. And uh, just, I can't believe the bread and butter sandwich, girl. There's like, and then there's like a whole potato in there. And the thing with stews, I mean, at least the nutrients that from those vegetables are kind of kept within that stew. So you kind of keep that in there. But that is a lot of stew. You don't need... To, and then you've got grape leaves with more carb inside of it. It's just unnecessary. Just unnecessary. And you know it. All right. Keep going. My hamster almost gave me a heart attack. He, you can't even see this one. Poor cat trying to get out of there, man. <laughs> he did something. Oh, anyway, must be my fault because okay. Um, <laughs> I went in to his bedroom. Must be your fault, or is your fault? <laughs> Usually. When it's an animal, and if it's an animal relying on a cage, and something's happened with the cage, then usually the owner is at fault. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Keep going. We know the story. Everyone's talked about the how. We keep his cage in the spare room with the door closed because of the cat, obviously. He's escaped a few times. We always found him. Usually because for some reason I forget to properly latch the door to his cage. I know. Anyway, we were having chicken. Um, was this last night when we had when I had the chicken for Ithar? I think it was like last night. I can understand the first time you may not have latched it properly and something happened, you're like, ah, sugar. But then to have it happen then a number of times afterwards and you still have seemingly not learned from the experience is concerning. You brush it off with an I know, like, oh, dumb me. But yeah, really. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Keep going. It just doesn't make logical um, sense. I've got to give him a little piece of breast. Because hamsters can have small amounts of chicken. tender beef mm. anyway that meat was left out so suspicion for his house food poisoning. Was there. yeah 
I had a pair of socks right size cage on my dresser because his desk is on my dresser and he stole a sock, okay? He used it for bedding, so I just let him have it. <laughs> what are you going to do afterwards? Okay. Usually when I come in, he comes right up from underground. He buries himself. No wiggly nose and whiskers this time. So I start panicking. Because, you know, I just, I think the worst. I know I hear that hamsters only live to be two to three years, you know, max. Um, yeah, and that's just what the apartment complex wants, is you having a deceased rodent somewhere inside a room that you cannot find, that just then remains deceased. And obviously it will start to smell. It just doesn't turn to dust. There will be a smell associated with any type of little, you know, deceased body. So, oh, can you please just bring it together? You, and then I know you literally came onto a live stream and said how little you care about the animal. So why don't you just donate it to a child in Salal's family? who might be interested in giving that animal some attention rather than you torturing it in your possession because the animal is miserable with you and you're miserable with the animal. Stop torturing each other. It's so cruel. It's so cruel to the animal. I don't give a Jesus about you, girl. I'll be honest. Really, don't, don't worry about your levels of anything. You made the decision to be a pet owner with this little companion animal. And you have done a really just awful job. And so I think at this time, it would be more responsible of you, which you have no responsibility to anything, to find a person that would want to give it a better home. Like I said, maybe there's a child relative in Salal's family that would like to have that animal, that would be willing. And you could say that you would help pay for the food. <sighs> Give it a better life to the end of its life, girl. You're wicked. God, you're a horrible human being. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been. It must be a year. Anyway. You know, howie, howie. Nothing. So I start feeling around under the shavings. He's not there. Mm. So I panic, I'm like, Salah, it's a hamster. I don't feel any of my vegetables either. I wash them and that's it. I don't care about that. <laughs> so he comes running in. Now, I don't remember if well, the cage was open or not. Like, That's probably the only one good thing you actually did for that <laughs> stew was not take the skins off the vegetables. Because that's where many a time a lot of the nutrients for these vegetables are held, is in the skins. If you notice, the skins are different colors than the insides of these vegetables, and there's a reason. So washing them and getting off the dirt and keeping the skins on is something I would recommend. So is it actually the one good thing that you did to this food? <laughs> but the portion size is ridiculous. When I first went in. But he had escaped, and I don't know how he got down from the dresser. Like, it's a big height. But there was, like, a yoga mat on the side and a whole bunch of things. Maybe he climbed down. He's a willful oh. little boy. No, it's he a rogue. Oh, God, she's so ridiculous. So, I'm like, the room, the spare room is a disaster right now. We have to declutter it. There's a lot of furniture in there. Oh, my God. Where's the napkin? Couch. So, like suitcases there's just so many places for him to hide am i not seeing a napkin again is it the licky fingers again <laughs> and i'm seeing the same i don't know i'm so confused because i'm obviously a couple of days behind on filming around the the meals but it's a lot of black during this hot holy month at the moment i wish i thought she was going to get a new hit a buyer a huge dresser he could be under so many things. And like we couldn't really get to him. So I'm calling the story the Enigma of the Missing Howie. So can we start? Uh, sorry, can we rename this story 
the enigma of foodie's missing brain. Can we rename it, please? Because <laughs> that's what this sounds like. Just, just you making no sense. Hurry up. I cannot believe it's at 1.5 and you still sound like you're talking fairly slowly. Can you imagine what she sounds like on regular speed? Slow as molasses. I was just so scared. Like, is he okay? I said, okay, I'm going to do a test. I'm going to put his cage on the ground. I took a hair clip and I kept the door open so he has access to his water and food and he wants to come back and get it. No, well, that's thoughtful of you. And he's the it? only living creature in that room that we know of. <laughs> so, <laughs> if the chicken disappears... Well, girl, if you're just throwing random pieces of chicken down, then you cannot really verify if Howie is the only living creature in that room. You are inviting for other pests potentially to come in. Just saying. Pardon me, but I'm going to have more, uh, a little more things. I would hate if to the be chicken your disappears, then We know for a fact that it's, he's okay. He's just hiding. I have to hide the bread in a bag from my cat because she loves bread. She'll literally steal the whole bag. She's, she's weird. I gave her a little, some, a little bit of it, but... Where's the mail? I cannot believe she needs more white bread after just having two slices of, you know, white bread, ultra-processed white bread, and then she's pulling out another little grape leaf here which has a lot of sodium a lot more carb in it so it's just two little things of carb again and then all the potato and carrots which are star starchy vegetables that i mean and more than the portion recommended for a diabetic meal whether she was controlled or not oh gosh her blood sugar has got to be wild and she said she was out of test strips so she has no idea what her blood sugars are doing currently. This is really a very dangerous situation for somebody as unmanaged as she is. Oh my gosh. <sighs> anyway, last sandwich. <laughs> um, mm. French butter too, I'm sure. So I, we went to bed and... Uh, you know, I had trouble sleeping. I had dreams and about how he, you know, was so sad. I was like depressed, you know, I, I feel like not knowing where he is, if he's okay or not. He usually is when he escapes, but still. So after sleeping, wake up, I go in the room, the chicken is gone. So I felt like a huge wave of relief. And I was like, hey, the chicken's gone. And even he was relieved because we love our hamster. So, I am just sitting here shaking my head, trying to figure out why this person needs to eat <laughs> three, like a full appetizer with the three grape vine. So that's like the grape leaf. Sorry. That's like a full appetizer. Then she has two sandwiches with, you know, just a slice of cheese. It's just, it's just salt with some butter and some, some, some bread. It's just to soak up the, the juices and the stew. Oh gosh. And then oh, just it's just it's remarkable. I just keep going, girl. I'm, I'm just like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm shaking, shaking my head. head. The furniture. He obviously likes it. So I was like, no, he's gonna poop everywhere, which is true. And I want to know if he's okay. So mm. like hundred percent I want to know where he is. So I also noticed besides the chicken being missing, that his sock full of wood shavings, all his bedding was missing. Okay. Mm. Go eat it. So this little bugger, this little thief, <laughs> he must have dragged all his bedding to where his new location was. He was moving house. I said I had a brilliant idea. I said, let's follow the shavings and see where he goes. I haven't seen a napkin. Sure enough, there was a trail leading to the couch, the gray sofa in the spare room, under it, and along the way, like right. By the entrance of the underneath of the couch, we see the sock. I'm like, oh my gosh, his sock is there. Also, a bunch of hamster droppings. Oh god, I don't know, man. Rodents poop a million times an hour. I swear.
wonder how many of us think that she even then took the time to clean up that rodent poop. Or is it still sitting there in that messy spare room? If you think it's not been cleaned up, pop a little picture of a rodent in the uh, comments if you've even gotten this far in my video. <laughs> pop me a little rat in the comments. Thank you. Anyway. This meal's still good. So, well, lift up the couch, like all COVID. He says, you look underneath. He's holding the couch up. I look underneath. Howie, and I don't know where he got this from. Was sleeping on top of a, a new nest he made. Oh, God. But the nest was made of like tissues and bottle caps and whatever he could find under the furniture. And he's just chilling there. Never mind that he. How many of us also want to bet that that nest is probably still sitting, not cleaned up off the floor? Though how he might be back in his crate. If you think it's still sitting on the floor, put me a little rodent, a little rat in the comments. <laughs> Almost getting terrible. Time. I'm feeling she's gonna break me. She's gonna break me. <laughs> so I said, okay, now's our chance. I'll hold the couch, you squeeze under because he's obviously more capable physically. Julia. Hi, baby girl. Julia wants out. And the hamster didn't run away, luckily. So I grabbed him. Which is a huge improvement for him with pets because he never grew up in a household that had pets. Um, and he was always like, a, like not afraid, but like squeamish to hold a rodent. <laughs> Julia's eating too. So. I grabbed him and I was like, howie, howie. I was so elated. And I just kept kissing him so hard I made him sneeze somehow. And I never heard a hamster sneeze until then. And I want it as a ringtone. Sounds like how he has dust allergies. <laughs> if I'll ever get another hamster after Howie. I love him and I really mean this like in the nicest way possible. I love him like to death. He's so cute. But I don't find hamsters are good pets. Like they just don't like humans. Like they just they're solitaire. They just like to hide most of the time. They're not cuddly, you know? Why did you get the hand? There's exceptions to that, but I just don't like owning a pet that doesn't want to be here, you know? Clearly, if he's escaping. Well, of course he doesn't want to be there, Chantel. You are not a particularly pleasant person to be around. <laughs> Even the hamster feels that way. <laughs> you gave him a very small home to live in. You don't take him out and socialize with him enough, which is something when you have those types of pets, in order for them not to bite or be so skittish around people, you have to handle them. You have to spend time handling those pets. And you need to also take time keeping them safe and you really are not equipped doing any of that so yes i think you not even having a hamster is a good plan and the fact that you are unable to take care of something as simple as a hamster girl is a good job that you don't own something that really would require attention like a dog oh or a cat oh shit i forgot you own a cat that you neglect as well and don't take to the vet and don't groom 
and leave matted and you're not getting compliments on how great your pets look from the majority of people. Most people are horrified with how you keep animals and pets. And if I could start a global petition to ban you from ever owning an animal ever again, I would start it because you're horrific around them. You're so unaware that they are sentient creatures that have their own feelings. It's all about you at the end of the day, not about the animal. Wicked. You're a really wicked human being, Shanta. <laughs> I hope your channel goes to the dump. I mean that in the nicest possible way. To me, there's just like no point. I also need a pet that's low maintenance. Like I can like I have trouble taking care of myself sometimes. Trouble taking care of yourself sometimes. Girl, you have trouble taking care of yourself all the time. All the time. What you just ate in front of everybody is not taking care of yourself. I don't care how many ways to Sunday you want to call that a comfort meal or whatever you want to you name it. It's not anything that's going to be beneficial for you. You're not out there working as a Mountie for the Canadian police, you know, mounted police or anything, <laughs> you know, burning up energy. You're a sedentary human being, doesn't get out and walk or barely exercise and can't even keep a pet safe and can't even give a modicum of attention to an easy animal like a hamster. I wouldn't even want a goldfish with you because that requires cleaning out their bowl. There's a pet rock. You are down literally to a pet rock at this point because you're so neglectful. And you don't take care of yourself. You don't wash, you don't bathe, you don't use a napkin when you eat a meal, you lick your fingers. I understand you're very unhygienic. You don't wash your hands after you go to the restroom. So, I mean, just... Maybe get that basic down. Take care of yourself. Take care of your health. And then think about bringing pets into your chaotic, disastrous thing you call your life. My cat is like as high maintenance as I can go. But I can't have to clean my cage very often. Girl, you can't even do the cat. Because you don't take the cat to the vet and you don't get the cat spayed either. So you're not even doing that. You just so bad. And everyone tells you. And so your way of reflecting upon that is getting more animals and putting more animals into misery with you. That's your way because we keep telling you you're not doing a good job. But we're just reminding other people who may watch your content how bad you are. And all the sycophants in your comment section. Oh, so glad how he's safe. God, I wish he'd done a runner. Doesn't he deserves better than you? He wants to be back on he wants to be on the streets with Julia. Safer out there than in your bloody care. I don't know. I can't stand the thought of him living in his own soil. Like, so I try to spot clean him like once a day. Especially his pee corner. I know, a lot of conversation. Mm. For dinner time. Chantel, no one's surprised that you can eat and talk about poop all at the same time. No one's shocked. No one's surprised. It's kind of up your lane, girl. So <laughs> just carry on. Carry on, Chantel. Carry on. That was so good. I was craving beef stew. I was craving beef stew, sorry. I feel like... 
there's a lot of comfort foods that like from back home that I still crave a lot. Oh God, more conversations around. <laughs> I liked it, but he was like, he's never had this. <laughs> so he looks at it, and there's meat in it, right? And uh, the sandwich. And he's like, where's the rice? <laughs> I'm like, babe, just try it. This is how we eat it in Canada. Sure enough, he loved it. But beet and rice are like a must. Um, yeah, so I would not, if you like, don't mind the taste. It's not any worse than a Diet Coke or like a Diet Cola or whatever. In terms of being sugar taste. They have a lot of different, you know, flavors. So um, this one, it doesn't taste like rocket ice lolly to me. Well, maybe a bit. You know what it tastes like? Remember Revs? I have no idea what a rocket ice lolly is, but keep on explaining because I'm sure you know and have experienced every candy, sweet, and treat there is to know. Maybe like a diet like Baja Blast. It does taste like Baja Blast, actually. They have a Wonka candy bar one, like a chocolate soda. I can't imagine what that would taste like. I don't know. Actually, I can't imagine. Anyway, so this is day two iftar. Um, I'm trying to do as many like daily vlogs as I can, but like it's going to be repetitive, right? Like, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I might combine it days, you know, like I kind of did in day one. Um, I did like this is the rest of day two, I guess, making this. And, um, but yeah, I know I live in this. Yeah, but the thing is, Chantel, you didn't actually show us even washing the vegetables, which is why I think the kitchen must be very, very untidy. Feel that. <laughs> it's so cozy and I don't have to worry. Get out of here. <laughs> the fruit fly colony followed me from the villa. I don't have to worry about, you know, hijab and anything else. Thank you very much. Being covered and everything. Like the sleeves are perfect. They're not dangly. And the material is nice and stretchy. I love it. I need to get more. And one of these was uh, 25 bucks, uh, 20, $25 with delivery, roughly. So not bad. Um, the only thing is, is because I'm so short, it's very, it's like drags on the ground a bit. So yeah, gotta get it hemmed. <laughs> anyway. One thing I was about to say, the logical thing is just to get it hemmed. All right. Are you going to do more talk about your health or anything interesting? Or how much you're spending on a bias? I do want to improve is slowing down and like trying not to like eat so much because like by the time Iftar comes around, <gasps> I'm so hungry because I'm not, you know. I'm used to eating a huge amount of food, right? So, <laughs> but, um, you know, if you eat a huge meal like this, then you're sluggish. Oh, 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 oh. just take the obvious. Everyone knows you eat huge amounts of food, Chantel. And you have no idea of portion control and that you don't care and that you don't care uh, if you're fat. And I'm just going to use that word because that's the word you've used yourself. And you've even said, does it look like I care? No, it doesn't look like you care at all. So keep on going, girl. Doctor, you know, I get it. I was watching a dietitian on TikTok and they're like, now these are the foods you should eat as a dietitian for iftar. No bread, no sambusa, no fried foods, no fatty, no greasy meats, no rice. I'm like, pal, you're talking to people in the Middle East here. <laughs> like, those are all staple foods for Ramadan. What are you talking about? But it's kind of true. They're, they are probably foods that are not the healthiest, but they're the tastiest, that's for sure. But yeah, so I'm, I'm craving like, you know, stews and um, that, that when I made the cottage pie, the shepherd pate chinois. So I'm trying to think what else. Meatloaf. I got to make that in the rotation. Yeah. Meatloaf. I haven't been able to find like onion soup mix. I must have it. I could use dehydrated onion. Uh, it's it. I I am not somebody who celebrates Ramadan. I am not familiar with the holiday being so obsessed about food. I remember it being very focused around the fasting part from my friends and them talking about how hard it was, especially towards the end, to have those long days of the fast and then have you know, just sit, you know, just the water and spitting it out throughout the day. So I know it was difficult. Just this is a lot of talk about food. Always. Same thing. There's always a substitute. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm just rambling now.
but uh, thank you for having dinner with me. Again, it's winter here. There's nothing more comforting than a bowl of beef stew. Oh yeah, didn't tell you how I made it. I always make beef stew differently. It depends what ingredients I have. You know, sometimes I had celery, sometimes I don't. So what I had in my, my pantry, my kitchen, so I had some beef cubes. Um, and then uh, I just um, dusted them with flour, salt, and pepper and fried them to sear them. Then I added some uh, container of tomato paste, three cloves of garlic, just whole, just like that. And I threw in some bay leaves. I love bay leaves. Um, and then I added the roughly cut vegetables. I don't like them small. I like them big, you know. Uh, and what else? Two beef bouillon cubes and about four cups of water. And then I just preheated the oven to 360 and I um, cooked it in just in my stainless steel pot with the lid on for about two hours and probably like two hours and 15 minutes or something like that. The beef is really tender. So yeah, there's nothing worse than chewy stew beef. I can't, uh, or tough beef. I can't even deal. I, I would rather eat rubber, like honestly. Anyway, all right, guys. I'm just so happy about how it's okay back in this cage. I have to be more careful, I guess, about that. I just don't think maybe, I don't know. Anyway, oh, I keep yawning. Anyways, guys. It's because you ate all that food and you don't do any exercise. And you say you are very low energy and you probably could be potentially deficient in certain things. Who knows? I'm guessing because you're yawning, the likelihood of the dishes being done immediately after the meal are slim to none. Oh, well. All right. Continue on. She's still got like a minute. She's going to talk about something. And then we're going to pop over to her vlog. <laughs> so that's my story about Howie. He's... A very interesting creature and i thought it would be cute to tell you how he tried to you know, where is howie else. i mean is his cage that bad i don't know i guess like when i think what i want to live in a cage but if i'm really small and there's so much huge things around i'd be scared i think i don't know he has a pretty good in his cage he has his chew toys and his corn and his house and no he doesn't have it good in his cage he showed you that by building all that nest stuff and you do live in a cage because you live in that tiny shoe box that you barely ever leave. So you should understand. But you like it. <laughs> How he does it. That's the difference. And your hands, are they getting like, like darker spots under here? Mm, girl. And your fingers are showing more dark rings. What? Is very indicative of the type 2 diabetes going on. Obviously, the swelling of the face, that CPAP rosacea, potential dermatitis. Who the heck knows what's going on there? Oh, my gosh. And then I wanted to point out in this video, she is wearing the wedding ring. The next one, she is not. But that's potentially because she's making the great leaves. But, yeah, the, you don't look good, girl. You don't look good comfortable bedding and lots of food and water i mean i don't know i don't know uh, maybe he misses running around i don't know we'll see i mean he has two wheels uh, i think that's why i don't want a hamster i feel like i can't make him happy you know i just don't have the talent or the means to build him a huge compound like some of those you see on social media so anyway <laughs> all right um that's it for now thanks for watching bye no, you could do something like put Julia into your bedroom and then bring him out and play with him for an hour a day and socialize him a little bit more. Because you're not doing much else, girl. Or when you're sitting there on your bees and you could have had him, but you just, you don't have a knack with animals. It shows. Anyway. Oh, all right. Let's get over to the next one. I'm going to get back over. All right, girl. We're going to. We're going to take you off here, and I'm going to bring up the next video. My goodness, girl. My goodness. All right. Let's get over to this Ramadan vlog that she had. Let's share that instead, because I know it's very exciting, and uh, it's not as long as this one. So, again, we're going to make sure we speed her up to 1.5, because otherwise she's very slow. Let's see what's going on in this vlog today. And what we got going on. All right, foodie. You ready? Let's go, go. Back to another video. Hey there, Beezers. Want a personalized video from me to you that you can keep forever? Or maybe a special shout out. Or maybe you just have a pressing question for me you want answered. All you have to do is request a personalized.
Now that's what Chantel really looks like, is what we're seeing with her sitting back there next to the window. That is what she looks like. Wow. I've not really been able to see her sitting and on the couch. And her face looks very swollen. Her abdomen sitting up on those legs. And again, we didn't see her getting up off the floor, getting down onto the floor, anything that would take a lot of mobility. She is not going to show us. So I can keep saying, I know you're not able to do it without a struggle, Chantel. And I know you're never going to show us doing it. You're going to show that performative prayer, which I think you should just leave that off the camera. You know, if people are going to doubt you're praying in the right direction, I think you just need to be content that you know which direction you're praying in and leave it, leave it there. But I know that you don't show us with you doing all the full movement because it, it takes you time and it's a struggle. And you look terrible sitting on that couch, girl. Your face looks really red. Gosh, you don't look good. Don't look good. Okay. All right, now I'm going to start making a warlock inab, which is dolma or yibra or stuffed grape leaves, one of my favorites. So I'm starting with one onion, one tomato diced up. And meanwhile, I'm soaking one cup of long grain basmati oh. rice in some water just to um, soften it up and also rinse and wash it. Oh. Then I'm going to... No, girl, I do hope you do wash your hands before you cook and before you make food. I would suggest even if you're doing it for your video, just preface that you should wash your hands before you start cooking anything. And then the thought that you just stuck your hands in the rice, that's just making me feel not well. I'm just saying, keep going to saute the onions and tomato in a bit of olive oil to let them get nice and soft. Then once the vegetables are softened, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of tomato paste and just let that cook down a bit as well mm. to get rid of some of the acidity out of the tomato. I'm adding some spices. I'm adding a little bit of cinnamon, some dry dill, some cumin, salt and pepper to the mixture here. And I'm just gonna let everything cook nicely together for a couple of minutes or so, not too long at all. Then you rinse the rice Make sure there's no liquid left and just add the uncooked but soaked rice to the mixture as well. And you have your stuffing for the uh, grape leaves. Hi, guys. Okay, so I'm going to start making the warm inna or the grape leaves. Some of you might know it as doma. So is that, do you add uncooked rice to it? Oh, that sounds like, that didn't look like enough fluid to make that rice soft. Like, I, is that how it's cooked? Oh, that makes me think the rice isn't going to get cooked properly. Oh, that's, uh, oh, there's a knack to that, I'm sure. Okay, interesting. All right, keep going, girl. Mm. And I'm thinking the kitchen is still messy because all we saw were like close up shots of the pan that she was cooking in. <laughs> we didn't see like kitchen shots. Uh, makes me think that kitchen messy from all that beef stew, all this cooking that she'd been up to. Another reason why we might be getting uh, her making grape leaves in the living room as well. Just get that kitchen clean. Just get in there and clean the kitchen, girl, so you can film in there. Seems First thing um, I need cooking to do is actually cut some vegetables to line the bottom of the pot with, which is still in the kitchen. But um, So, yeah, I'm going to do that now. I have some washed vegetables here. You're just going to cut them about this thick. Honestly, I'm not really sure why they do that. That's one thing I didn't look up oh. yet. <laughs> Maybe just to prevent the burning from underneath. I feel like she's going to take her fingers off with the way she cut those potatoes. Girl, that you, that's not how you slice the potato like that. You just kind of chop it along. What? Anyway, all right, keep going. <laughs> you can tell she don't cook much because she doesn't have. She certainly doesn't have knife skills. <laughs> I would assume, but. Yeah, we're going to just put that there. A little scrap over here. 
Um, that's what I'm guessing. So just like that. Mm. My cat is going nuts. The minute I press play, she goes insane. I know she's ate most of those white chocolate treats. <laughs> I've noticed about half of the uh, the the candies are gone. You're doing a good job on those, Chantel. All right, so I'm gonna cut these. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, you're not a vegetarian, carnivore. Oh, cat hair on the food. Oh, I don't, I don't like the middle slices like this. Oh, she's gonna lose a finger. Hey, I don't know. This cat eats anything, so she might like potatoes. Like and I mean, she likes bread. Are you weird? So I'm gonna do a layer of tomato and then potato, but I'll show you how I layer the vegetables after. Like that. <laughs> okay, we'll put them aside with a knife. I'm gonna get a plate. And we have here the grape leaves, like this. Now I've never, I'm gonna take the stem off of that, this little stem here. I've never done this, so I've looked up a bunch of ways that people do it. And here's the rice mixture. I need a spoon. All right. So I'm going to do a few just like this, and then I'm going to put the camera closer so you can see what I'm doing, okay? All right, let's try this. This is my very first, very own grape leaf. <laughs> okay, like, out like that. I'm going to put the mixture here. Mm, I'm not sure bit. about that rice not being pre-cooked, girl. If I do this, I'll be so happy. <laughs> it's going to be gonna bad. Hold it in like that. Okay. Uh, I don't know about that. Sides. Rice not being. They're not going to be perfect, I'm sure. Perfect. Sorry. And then you roll it like this. Wow. Okay. <laughs> not bad. All right. I'm going to put them on the plate for now. Okay. I'm going to turn the camera around uh, so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. Oh, gosh. She's touching her fingers that she's rolling her food to her face. Obviously, there's no paper towel. She bought all these paper towels, but I don't see her reaching for one while she makes the grape leaves, which would have been nice. Um, Chantel, I can see that you rolled some Mary Jane back in your day because that's some skills with some papers, girl. That's some paper skills there. You're showing your paper skills. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> When I was in Canada, I always sought these out at different um, shawarma places, Syrian or Lebanese, usually. Um, and the places that would make them homemade, of course, because they're just, they're so much better homemade. Like, you guys have no idea. They're so mm. good. I don't know about right, that. I'm going to take it like that. Uncooked okay. rice. I'm going to fold it in. I'm going to fold it in. Hey, the ring gone today. Like that. They're actually really easy to roll. Hmm. All right. A lot of great The rice. So these are going to cook. I'll tell you right now. Um, you put some water and you cook them on the the stove top for um about forty five minutes with some water. Mm. And then after forty five minutes, you make a mixture with pomegranate molasses and things. I'll show you guys. And then you cook them for a bit longer, another maybe half an hour, forty minutes or so. So every recipe is different. You know, I don't know. So let's see here. Wow, my very own grape leaves. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> that freak out. <laughs> Chantel, girl, calm it down. I, I See, anytime you achieve anything, you actually get quite excited. See, when you actually can do stuff and you, but the thing is, it's I think that you are somebody that if you are not able to pick it up as quick as you did, as you have with this, then you wouldn't enjoy it. But because you were able to roll these quite easily, you're enjoying the experience. And it shows. Keep going. <laughs> she's she's crazy. What happened there? Did the plate attach itself to your abdomen and get dragged along? Oh, that was wild. That was wild. <laughs> keep going girl okay you guys i'm gonna finish up this you know it's gonna take a little while so i'm gonna listen to something get comfortable roll these all up and then i'll come back when it's time to cook them okay i'm so excited yella okay and there they are mm. excuse you get the, get the cow oh. hair out of that there's gonna be cat hair 
<laughs> so here they are, the, the rolled Warwick and Ab. So I do have quite a bit of leaves left, but we'll see what I do with them. And uh, now I'm gonna prepare the pot for cooking. Yellow. All right, so here they are. Now I'm just going to layer the bottom of this big pot, okay, um, with some tomato. So let me just put that down. If I have leftover tomato, they're perfect for tomato sandwiches. Woo! All right, so we have the tomatoes. Okay, now the potatoes. And the potatoes are going to absorb the sauce and the liquid, and it's going to be so good, actually. <laughs> All right, some potatoes. I guess it gives them something to lay on top of as well, is my guess. Okay. So tomato potato lining. Okay, and now we're going to put the rapies. Put them around the pot. I'm gonna save some of the grape leaves and maybe make another batch tomorrow if this turns out very well because I don't want to waste the grape leaves I have left over. <laughs> you know? Okay, like that. Like that. I'm confused I because these. I thought this was a vlog. So much. <laughs> As you guys all know, I eat them very frequently and I've never, ever made my own. So I'm very excited to see. And practice makes perfect with things, especially if you're making them for the first time. So if they don't turn out very well, that's fine. But I showed Salah, he's like, oh yeah, they look really nice. So we'll see. Okay. So that's how they look in the pot. Now, I'm just going to take some leaves that are not, like they, they weren't perfect. You know, like I, they were ripped or something like this. And I'm just going to cover them. It helps weigh them down because you don't want them floating all around in the pot when they're cooking, apparently. That's what I saw one lady say when I watched the tutorial. So I'm just going to put some of these on top. Hopefully that will help them protect them. If you're wondering what grape leaf tastes like, it's a tart. It's like a tart. I don't know, maybe because they're in brine and maybe because of the sauce. I don't know what they taste like raw. <laughs> these are like brined ones. Oh, no. But they're very... Brine, I eat soaked in salt. Oh God, that's why we always say that if you have any heart issues, Chantel, that you should not be eating these grape leaves, girl. You need to keep away from those things. Anything that's brined means it's salt. It's it's that salt water. That's what brine stuff, sweetie. Oh, your poor heart. I mean, it's just. I think you just are not wanting to understand how these elements can affect your body. You just persist on wanting to eat whatever you have in front of you. And I don't think the decisions that you're making are great. Even if it is homemade, these were brine, so it doesn't necessarily equate to healthier sometimes. That's the biggest thing I think that you're missing in this equation. Very good. I don't know how to describe the flavor. It's a very unique flavor, and some people, when they first try it, it it's an acquired taste for them because, you know, <laughs> it takes them getting used to. I liked them right away, but I did find them a bit different, right, because I never had a flavor like that in my life, especially growing up in Canada where I never ate them before. They do have them in Canada, but I didn't. I love them. Don't get me wrong. But I am always shocked at how much sodium they have. And she just ate three that were with her beef meal, beef stew meal, that were probably store-bought. Mm, girl, wow. Uh, your blood pressure has got to be very high. I think we're all eating these. So I'm going to put one more leaf here. Okay. And just like that. All right. Okay. And to keep it weight weighted down, I'm gonna put a plate on them like this while they're cooking so that, like I said, they don't float around. And I'm just gonna cover with foil because I broke the lid to this pot. I have the outer layer, actually, I'm gonna put foil in the outer layer <laughs> of the um, the lid, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna cover these with mostly cover with water. And then I'm going to um, cook them for about, I'm gonna maybe like 40 minutes or so. Um, and then I'm gonna add the sauce and the sauce is going to be um, one cup of water, two tablespoons of pomegranate molasses, and two tablespoons of sugar. And I'm going to pour it over top of them. So I'll show you them when they're finished and we're going to taste test. Okay. Bismillah. All right. Here they are in the pot, all cooked. Ooh. So yeah, let's uh, dish this out and see what they taste like.
I'm not sure what happened to those leaves, though, but th that was a very odd colour. <laughs> like they got boiled a little dry there. Or was that with the sauce? I don't think that sauce with the sugar, pomegranate syrup and everything is a good plan either. <laughs> Just You hate your heart, you hate your pancreas. That's all I can think. Okay, guys, here is here they are. <sighs> All right, let's try this. Moment of truth. It feels soft. It's smell. I'm breaking my fast with this. Then I'm gonna pray my grub, and then I'm gonna have your car. So. They're exactly how I love them. Mm. Where's the napkin? No well. napkin. She wants a napkin. Oh god, she's on the potato. Oh, that's now she that she mm. did like. No, uh, she liked the potato more than she liked <laughs> the grape leaves. I wanted to see if that rice looked cooked. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I have suspicions about that rice. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> One more. These are so good. Oh my gosh. One more. Yeah. Girl, if they were good, you'd eat six. Mm. Yeah, we go for the potato. <laughs> God, great. Small plastic bottle waste. Oh, so thirsty. You guys, you have to try these. Yes. Yeah, you have to try this if you love these. Um, if you've never tried them, oh my gosh, please try grape leaves. They're so good. But I feel like if you're like a picky eater, you might not like them. I don't know. But Salah loves them and he's kind of a picky eater with some things. It just depends, I guess. <laughs> whatever you say, whatever you say. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching this. Stop trying to make him a side character. <laughs> Nobody wants him back. We're all happier not to see Salah. He is also a despicable human being. And uh, that's a great face, girl. That was not really a vlog, I think, from what I understand. Wouldn't that consist of different things that you did throughout the day, making it a video log of your day, whereas this is just you making grape leaves? <laughs> All right, Chantel. Well, thank you so much for that. That was very inspiring. Oh, I'm gonna pray for your 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 heart and your pancreas, girl. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you being here. If you do like this type of content, please hit the likes, please subscribe. And if you did get this far, even in the video, and you want to drop a little cute emoji, drop me an emoji of some grapes now. That's if you got to the end of the video. Drop me some grapes. Drop me grapes, drop me rats. <laughs> All right, guys. I look forward to the next time we see you. I hope you all take care. And uh, just make sure you wash your hands uh, before you do any activities because you'll keep nice and healthy that way. Let's just uh, say goodbye and adios. Mm -hmm.